Hi, I'm Chris, and thank you for choosing Lightspeed Voice. Today, we'll be doing a tour of Connect, Lightspeed Voice's phone-only option. Here, we're on the dashboard, where we can see information for today's call time, today's outbound calls, today's inbound calls, and today's waiting time. If we scroll down a bit, we'll see the leaderboard, where there's information for longest call time, most outbound calls, and most inbound calls. You can select if you'd like to view just today or the past week. The next tab we have is CDR report. As an administrator, you'll be able to review the report for anybody in the office. You can select a date range, type of calls, direction, show by, groups, users, and phone number. If you click on a user, you'll be able to see all their calls within the date range specified. On these calls, we get information like call time and date, the name of the caller, the number, the direction of the call, You'll be able to download the recording, the call length, the result, and disposition. If we scroll down a bit, we'll see some graphs for CDR total calls chart. We also have CDR calls in seconds chart. In the upper right, if you'd like to download this report, just click the download button. CDR hourly distribution will show a breakdown of inbound and outbound calls throughout the time selected in the date range. Here you can also narrow down by direction, show by, groups, and users. If we scroll down, we'll see call distribution per hour, and a little bit further down, call distribution by user per hour. User status history will show any time a user has made adjustments to their status on the switchboard. Here we can see that Douglas was available and then went on break. We'll also get information about time in, time out, how long, and who it was changed by. Call history will give you a total breakdown of all calls inbound and outbound within the office. Just like with the other breakdowns, you'll have the option to choose the date range, the user, which direction, and the type of call. Some of the information we'll see under call history is destination, direction, dialed number, user, call date, duration, and on the right, we'll have the ability to play recording, which will play it right through your speakers, download recording, add prospect to phone book, and hide prospect. Download history will show any time a fax has been downloaded within the office. Below, we can see some faxes that have been downloaded, including when the fax was sent and when it was downloaded at. On the right side of the screen, we'll see our switchboard. Here we can see all the users in the office and their activity. We can customize who or what we see in the upper left by choosing either user list groups, or queues. In the upper right, if I click the gear icon, I'll be able to customize these views. A great new feature of Connect is the ability to drag and drop to transfer calls. You can see that I'm on a call, and once I'm on a call, there will be a drag indicator next to the phone icon. Click and hold, and you'll have the ability to drag that call either directly to another extension or to their voicemail. You can obviously still transfer through your phone if you'd like, and there is another way that you can do it through this interface. If you don't want to drag and drop, you can simply click on the icon for a user. Other options under here are call their extension, transfer to, and if you're an administrator, you'll have pause, unpause, add to queue, and remove from queue abilities. Another very useful feature is the parking lot. I can click and drag to bring my call to the parking lot. The parking lot is a very useful feature in that it's a great indirect way to transfer. We sometimes call it a waiting room. The person on the phone hears hold music, and anyone in the office can pick that call up. This gives you the opportunity to call somebody, ask if they're available, and if they are, they can just pick it up right away. Or, if you need somebody else to answer that call, they can do the same, and it's as easy as clicking right there on the phone icon. Another feature exclusive to administrators is the ability to interact with calls on other extensions. These include Listen, Whisper, Hijack, Hang Up, and Barge. You can access these options by clicking on the phone icon when another extension is on a call. When choosing any of these options, except for Hang Up, they'll trigger your phone to ring, and answering it will connect you to that extension's call. Listen allows you to hear the conversation without the caller or the extension within the office knowing you're listening in. Whisper allows you to listen in, and the extension within the office can hear you, but the caller cannot. This is a great tool for training. 
Hijack connects you with the caller and removes the other extension from the call. Hang Up disconnects the call, and Barge immediately brings you into the call and makes it a conference with you, the extension within the office, and the caller. On the left side of your switchboard, you'll have a flyout menu. The first button expands the switchboard. This is great if you have a large office and would like to see more extensions at once. In the upper right, you can search for specific extensions either by entering their name or extension number. You can also customize this view in the upper right. The next option down is voicemail. If you're a user, you'll only be able to view your own voicemail, but administrators will have access to everyone in the office. You'll get information like the caller ID, the name, the date, which mailbox, the duration of the message, the ability to play the voicemail through your phone, listen to the voicemail, which would be through your computer, download, and delete it entirely. Next, we have speed dial. Along the top, you'll see instructions for using speed dial. We have some samples here, but if you'd like to add your own, you click the plus in the upper right. Below that, we have call history. We already reviewed call history on the dashboard, but just to take a quick look again, under call history, you can set a date and time range, and here you'll be able to see the destination, direction, dialed number, user, call date, duration, and action buttons for interacting with this call. The last option is fax. Here we'll see all inbound and outbound faxes. If you have more than one fax number, you can narrow them down in the upper left. You can also set direction and date range. On the right, you'll be able to download the fax if needed. If you'd like to send a new fax, click the fax icon in the upper right. You'll need to enter the fax number, the recipient's name, and upload a file. The dialer in the bottom left is a useful way of reaching the contacts in your phone book. When you click on it, you'll have the option to start calling. Clicking this will ring your phone, and when you answer it, you'll be connected to the dialer. I already have a contact loaded in, but if I'd like to speak with somebody else, I can either use a number pad, or I can go to my phone book and click on a prospect. You'll see that the number in the dialer is updated. When I'm ready, I can click Call. When the call ends, I'll have the option to set a call result or disposition. Once I've made my choice, I can click Save. When the dialer is active and connected, you'll see it flashing here on the left side. When it's solid white, that means it's disconnected. Along the top in the upper right, you'll see some quick tools. Add Contact can be used when you quickly want to add a contact to your phone book. Type in the contact's information, and when you click Save, you'll be taken directly to them. The next button over is for Chat. Here you'll be able to communicate with anybody in the office. Just click on a user, and then you can start typing your message. You can also do group chats by clicking the icon with the plus next to it along the top. To the right of Chat is your notification bell. Here's where you'll see notifications about text, faxes, and other. If you'd like to not receive notifications for a particular category, just uncheck it. Next, we have the gear icon. Under this icon, we can go to Settings and Log Out. Let's take a look at Settings. Under Settings is your profile. Here you'll see your extension, time zone, forwarding phone, and Lightspeed voice password. This can all be edited by clicking Edit in the bottom right. Along the bottom, you'll also have the ability to add a profile picture. In the very upper right, there's a lucky icon with a question mark. This is where you can submit a ticket, feature request, or have quick access to help videos on YouTube. For submitting a ticket, your name and email address should already be filled in. You just need to type out the description, select the affected area, and upload any screenshots if necessary. Then click Submit. We'll now take a look at the phone book, although we have reviewed it briefly already. Here we can see all the contacts we have in the phone book. They can be called by clicking the phone icon next to the number. If you'd like to add another contact, you can either do that along the top where it says add contact or click the plus here in the upper right. Clicking on the contact will take them to the contact page and show any information you have saved on them. Next, we'll take a look at Messenger. Messenger is where you can send and receive text messages. If you're an administrator, you'll be able to see all messages within the office whereas users will only be able to see the ones for themselves. You'll see the outgoing on the right and incoming on the left. If you'd like to send another text to this contact, you can click the text icon along the top. If you have a template you'd like to use, you can select it here. You can also quickly go to the Manage Templates page by clicking Manage Templates right here. I've loaded in my template simply titled Hello. The subject is for internal use only. 
my message automatically loaded along the bottom. If I'd like to attach a file to this text, I can do that here. We also have the ability to use shortcodes to link any information we already have. Once you're done, you can click Send. We'll now take a look at Management. Under Management, we have Account Settings, Lead Settings, and Phone Settings. We'll first take a look at Account Settings. Under Account Settings, we have Roles and Permissions, Groups, and Users. Roles and Permissions is where you can make adjustments to how administrators and users access Connect. The administrator role obviously has access to everything within Connect, but you can create your own user roles with specific permissions. This role I created is for a front desk person. The only thing I wanted them to have access to was related to phones. If I want to assign somebody to this role, I can click Edit, go to Users with or without roles, select one or multiple people, and then click Save. If I'd like to give a user more permissions, I'll click Edit, and I can expand the category to give them specific permissions, or I can just select the entire category to add all permissions. Next, we have Groups. Groups are a way to organize your Office users. You can edit the name for this group in the upper right, and you can make adjustments for assigned and can view, view only, or neither. To create a new group, Click the plus in the upper right. Users will show all users within your office. On the right side, you can delete a user, change their user password, reassign the user, or change the user type. Clicking on a user will show you more information, including their roles, groups, and any permissions they have. You can create a new user by clicking the plus in the upper right. Under Lead Settings, we have Block List. Block List will show any emails or phone numbers that we have blocked. You can block in just specific directions like inbound or outbound, and you can block calls or SMS. Here I have a spam caller, so I just block their number inbound. Below that, I have someone who really doesn't want to speak with us, and to avoid any interactions, I've blocked them in every way possible. You can add your own blocks by clicking the plus in the upper right. Under Phone Settings, we have Fax, Extension Control, Parking Lots, Queues, and Ring Groups. Under Fax, we can select the fax number along the top if we have more than one, and then we can select for each user if they have access to inbound and outbound. Whenever you make a change, be sure to click Save. Extension Control is where we can make updates to the extensions of each user. Here I can update the name which caller ID is used when making outbound calls from that extension, their voicemail email, their voicemail password, if I'd like to attach a voicemail recording to their email, enable or disable call waiting, and enable or disable call recording. Parking lots are used as an indirect way of transferring calls. Most offices will just use the 9000 parking lot, but if you have more than one location, you may use more. Here we can decide if we want to revoke access to the parking lot to anybody in the office. Queues is where we can set up and design queues. We currently have nobody in this office's queue, so in the upper right we'll click the plus button. We'll decide who we'd like to add to it, whether they're dynamically assigned or not, if they have any penalty, meaning they'd only ring if others with a lower penalty number weren't available, and whether they're paused or not in that queue. Ring groups are much like queues. Ring groups are for groups of users who will ring depending on which number is called. If we click the Edit button, we can see some more information. This is our main Florida ring group. We can see the extensions in this ring group, that it's set to ring all, it'll ring for 20 seconds, and if no answer, it'll go to voicemail. Ring groups will automatically be set up for you when you start with Lightspeed Voice, but if you'd like to make any changes yourself, they can be done here. This has been Lightspeed Voices Connect, and thank you for choosing Lightspeed Voice.